a thinking Thursday. It's going to be a thoughtful Thursday. Do you agree? So let's have a huge round of cheers for everybody who has made it today to Sahara Star for the 8th edition of International Tooling Summit 2024. On behalf of TAGMA, I would like to welcome you all for this special day, this special celebration, this special occasion. My name is Shayanti Banerjee and it's an absolute honor to be a part of your team today. Thank you so much for having me here and I am looking forward to this special offering from TAGMA which is the Tool and Gorge Manufacturers Association of India established in 1990. This platform serves as a forum for the Indian tool room and dye and mold industry. As one of the major initiatives of TAGMA, like we all know, the International Tooling Summit is a two-day amalgamation of domestic and foreign players in this segment. We also have a hashtag for today, so we will request you to take this communication forward with the hashtag, hashtag ITS2024. This year, the summit has become a platform for Indian tooling suppliers and as a major catalyst for growth because we have a knowledge sharing session back to back following all day of all these two days. This event also provides a unique platform for the industry professionals to network with their potential customers, learn from the subject experts and update their technical know-how. So at this point of time, let me begin with a little bit of philosophy. Like I said, this is a Thinking Thursday. So I will leave you with this food for thought for today, which is knowledge is a tool. And like all tools, its impact is in the hands of the users like you all. Do you agree? So with that thought, we will move forward and celebrate this auspicious day with the lamp lighting, which will begin after the national anthem. Thank you so much for joining us here. Let's have the national anthem. <laughs> Punjab Sindh Gujarat Maratha Dravida Pukkada Vanga Vindya Himachala Yamuna Ganga Uchala Janati Taranga Tava Shubha Name Jage Tava Shubha Ashish Mage Gahe Tava Jaya Gatha Janagana Mangana Nayaka Jaya He Bharata Bhagya Vibhata Jaya He Jaya He Jaya He Jaya 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 He Thank you so much. Now I will request the key people of the organization to move forward for the lamp lighting. Please put your hands together as I invite Mr. Devarya M. Shirigar, President Tadma India, to please come forward. Let's have a huge round of applause for Mr. D. Shamnu Sundaram, Vice President Tadma, to please join him here in front of the stage for the lamp lighting. Huge round of applause for our chief guest, Mr. Ritesh Agrawal, Senior Vice President and Head of Sourcing, Auto Sector Mahindra and Mahindra Limited. Huge round of applause for guest of honor, Mr. Vagish Dikshit, Managing Director and Partner, Alpha India. Once again, for our guest of honor, Mr. Sunil Koparkar, Managing Director of IAC International Automotive India Private Limited. 
we will proceed with the auspicious lamp lighting ceremony as we begin this celebration and last mr salil kumar vice president snt group of companies to please join us I will request the gentleman to please come on stage for the proceedings of the day. May I request Mr. Dev Gya, M. Shri Gar, President Tagma India, and Mr. D. Shams, um, Vice President Tagma, to please escort the guests, our eminent dignitaries, on stage right now. Our chief guest is Mr. Ritesh Agarwal, Senior Vice President and Head of Sourcing, Auto Sector Mahindra and Mahindra. Guest of Honor, Mr. Vagish, Managing Director and Partner, Alpa, India. Guest of Honor, Mr. Sunil Koparkar, Managing Director of IAC International Automotive, India Private Limited. Keynote speaker is Mr. Salil Kumar, Vice President, s and Group of Companies. Huge round of applause for all these gentlemen here. We'll request the President to please begin the welcome address. Good morning. Welcome to the 8th edition of the International Tolling Summit. I would also like to Officially welcome to our dignitaries on the dais, Mr. Ritesh Agrawal, Senior Vice President and Head of Sourcing, Mahindra and Mahindra Limited. Mr. Vagish Dixit, Managing Director and Partner, Alpha India. Mr. Sunil Kop Koparkar, Managing Director of IAC International Automotive India Private Limited. I would also like to welcome all the speakers and their dignities and delegates. This year the themes, scaling up the Indian tooling industry, couldn't be more the timely. As we stand on the edge of the remarkable growth, the chance to lift our industry to new heights has never been better. The global demand of high quality tools is rising and India is well positioned to become a major player of the global market. By scaling up, we cannot only meet this demand, but also see, set the new benchmark in the quality, innovation and efficiency. I encourage you to take all advantage of the knowledge and networking opportunities available today. Together, let's work towards scaling <coughs> up and shaping the future of Indian tooling. Mere dosto, tool making ke industry mein last 32 years se mera khud ka company aur 43 years se a industry mein kaam karte growth dekhte aaya hu last 10 saal pehle tool maker ka jet different abhi aur bhi different uske liye hum tool makers साथ होके जो कंप्लेंट्स हमारे लिए आता है अच्छा क्वालिटी का मोल्ड बनता है इंडिया में उसको दिखाने के लिए हम लोग को सब मिलके काम करना पड़ेगा ये मेरे तौर से आपका भी ऐसे होगा उसके लिए हम लोग इंटरनेशनल टूलिंग समेत 
डायमोड इन एग्जीबिशन उसके अलावा इंटरनेशनल एग्जीबिशन में भी हम लोग जाके कुछ सिक्के आते हैं इंडिया में इस टाइप का बिजनेस लेवल नहीं था पहला अभी कंपटीशन करके कोई काम नहीं करते क्वालिटी के ऊपर ही काम होना चाहिए उसके लिए हम सब टूल मेकर्स साथ होके अच्छे से इंडस्ट्री का ग्रोथ दिखाते हैं अभी बढ़ना चाहिए इकोनॉमी हम लोग थ्री फाइव लेवल से सेवन लेवल थ्री लेवल करके सोचते हैं ऐसे ही हमारे टोलिंग इंडस्ट्री भी यूरोप से भी कुछ कम नहीं ऐसे दिखाने के लिए हम सबको काम करना पड़ेगा उसके लिए टगमा से जो भी पॉसिबल है हमारे ट्रेनर में उसके बाद में कभी ट्रेनर में भी कोशिश करेंगे कि टोल मेकर को क्या सहायता लगे लगेगा उसके लिए अभी हम लोग आई टी एस एट एडिशन बना रहे हैं ऐसे ही नाइन्थ एडिशन भी होगा एवरी ईयर उसके लिए कार्य टोल मेकर सुनने से नहीं होगा साथ देने की जरूरत भी है देखिए गए महीने तक पंद्रह दिन पहले तक भी हमको ऐसा लगता था क्या होगा मगर आज बहुत खुश हूँ पाँच सौ डेलीगेटेड हमारा आज फुल है इतना अच्छा होगा उसके लिए सपोर्ट करते रहिए टोल मेकर्स का ही नहीं है टोल मेकर्स मशीन सप्लायर्स स्टील सप्लायर्स उतना भी नहीं है और टायर वन और वही एम्स भी सपोर्ट करना चाहिए इंडियन टोल मेकर को अच्छा करने के लिए हम गारंटी देते हैं टेगमा के थ्रू ऑल टोल मेकर्स आपका रिक्वायरमेंट के हिसाब से बना के देने का कोशिश करेंगे और करके देंगे भी सभी लोग कंपेयर तो लास्ट दो तीन साल से सभी टोल मेकर्स अपने एक्सपेंशन कर, कर, करके दे चुके हैं मगर टायर वन और वही एम्स हमको बोल के जाते हैं हम सब कुछ इंडिया से खरीदेंगे मत कितना साथ सपोर्ट दे रहे हैं उसमें अभी तक कम है और मैं हम लोग आपस मैं यहाँ टगमा प्रेसिडेंट कहजे से सबसे रिक्वेस्ट करता हूँ टायर वन से वही से इंडियन टोल मेकर को सपोर्ट कीजिए और आज आज और कल दो दिन सभी लोग ये हमारा आई टी एस समिट को एंजॉय कीजिए धन्यवाद ह्यूज आउट ऑफ ब्लाउज वंस अगेन फॉर मिस्टर डी एम श्रीगर द प्रेसिडेंट नाउ फॉर द चीफ गेस्ट एड्रेस मे आई रिक्वेस्ट मिस्टर रितेश अग्रवाल सीनियर वाइस प्रेसिडेंट एंड हेड ऑफ सोर्सिंग ऑटो सेक्टर महिंद्रा एंड महिंद्रा लिमिटेड टू प्लीज ज्वाइन अस हियर ह्यूज राउंड ऑफ अप्लॉज टैग मा प्रेसिडेंट मिस्टर शेरेगा मिस्टर शानुगम वाइस प्रेसिडेंट एंड द एग्जीक्यूटिव काउंसिल ऑफ टैगमा थैंकफुल टू टैगमा फॉर इन्वाइटिंग मी एज द गेस्ट ऑफ ऑन अवर हियर इट्स एन ऑनर फॉर मी टू डिलीवर द एड्रेस हियर this is my first visit to the tooling summit so quite impressed with the gathering here and happy to be here uh i would just give an outline to my presentation uh, i would start with a brief snapshot of the indian economy related to the manufacturing industry and then the tooling industry relating it to the auto industry and what is the expectation around it so i would say that in india we are very fortunate to be here we have the good blessings from everybody so that if you look at it we have a very stable macroeconomic environment a political uncertainty amongst the upheaval that we are seeing outside india in our neighborhood in middle east russia ukraine crisis whatever is happening we are very fortunate to have a very stable environment here which is actually laying down stable stones for future growth so india is on a trajectory to stated uh, to its stated objective of becoming the third largest in the world by 2028 doing 5 trillion dollars of gdp it achieved 8.15% of gdp growth last year and as an average if you look at it past 3 years we have done 8.3% gdp growth which is really good in world standards with signs of rural economy rebounding and strong growth in manufacturing good credit growth there is enough confidence that india will outpace growth in the rest of the world it's the third largest fintech company in the world after us and uk fourth largest stock market by market cap overtaking hong kong this year india has made rapid progress in the digital world we have world class digital payments infrastructure and the digital identity through aadhaar has actually led to a digital revolution in india making uh, the price of data probably the lowest in the world if india has become a, if has to become a 5 trillion dollar economy by 2028 
it has to excel in manufacturing as well. The manufacturing contribution to DDP today is 17%, and we have to take it forward if we have to go to a $5 trillion economy by 2028. And this we have to do by offering employment to the large youth that is available in India. India offers a favorable dem demography with an average age of population at 27 years, which compares with 39 years in China, and much more in Europe. This youth is looking forward to a suitable employment avenues. Employable, employability of the graduates in India has gone up from 33%, which was there in 2014, to 51%, which is today, thanks to the Skill India mission, which was launched by the government in 2015. So government is now looking at roadmaps to the experts to increase the manufacturing GVA through the rapid mission, which was announced a week back, which is targeting to increase it from current 17% to 25% by 2028, with the idea to get private sector to invest in local R&D, which is key to manufacturing boost. The Indian industry has to work on investment on in technologies, harnessing and developing engineering talent in India, which is plentifully available, inculcate a reliability and quality mindset, and improve the skills around the youth. The, the industry has all to work, also to work on digital capability to deliver superior uh, results. Coming to the tooling industry, you're all a part of a linear tooling industry which is valued at $3 billion in F23, which has made rapid progress in the last 10 years. What we have seen is the capability of the tooling industry has gone up far ahead. And if we look at it today, we are proud of the tooling industry with what they have achieved. India imports still around 35% of its tooling dem demand from China, Taiwan, Korea, and Japan. 15% of Indian tooling production is exported to US. Hence, there's a lot of headroom which is available for growth and expansion. At m and today, we import 60% of our requirement on skin panels and A and B class height and height inside steel requirements, which again could be substituted with Indian steel uh, tool making, which is the need of the hour. So this provides a huge business opportunity to Indian tool makers to upgrade themselves and to get the business from the Indian OEs. Tagma has played a pivotal role in working together with the industries, industry bodies to take Indian tooling industry to the, to the level they are at today. So they have taken lots of steps towards skill development, uh, delivering tooling the academies, tooling talk, etc. They have helped in manufacturing capability improvement, quality upgradation. They have given a lot of exposure to the tooling industries by uh, giving them an exposure to the users so that they understand what are the expectations. And probably that is one of the reasons that I'm called here. They've also engaged with the government bodies to talk about the constraints that they are facing and how they can be outcome. So would like to congratulate TAGMA for the good work they have been doing and which they will continue to do. Coming back to the auto Indian uh, industry performance, F24, Indian auto industry has been growing at a very fast pace recording 8.4% growth in the passenger vehicle segment in F24. And we've grown to a size of 4.2 million vehicles. We've become the fourth largest in the world in terms of uh, sales in India. And there's an industry shift which has happened. Now we have a UV share of around 60%, which was around 20% four years back. So there's a huge shift which has happened to the UV industry as such. The market size of the auto industry is now around $120 billion, which is expected to grow to $200 billion by 2030. So this offers huge opportunity to the allied industry. However, imports which are growing at a faster pace than exports have to be reduced, and hence lies the opportunities for the allied industry. Otherwise, it's a business opportunity which is lost. Again, exports offer a lot of opportunities. So that's the need of the hour, that we reduce the imports, increase our exports, and reduce the current time to current deficit and create an Arth Nirvar Bharat. MM performance has been very good in the last four years, if I look at it. Uh, F24, we delivered the highest volumes at 8.26 lakhs with a growth of 18%. And in the passenger vehicle segment, we delivered a growth of 29%. Similarly, if I look at the Indian auto industry in terms of competition, I think everybody has been doing pretty well. 
So that offers a lot of business opportunity to the tooling industry because it's a large ecosystem that you have to support. At Mahindra, last three years we have deli delivered three flagship projects and all of them have been runaway success and we've been doing pretty good volumes in the last three years. This year also, we just started the year with the launch of XUV 3XO, which is doing pretty well in the market, delivering 10,000 a month. And we have recently uh, announced the launch of the 5 door Thar, uh, which is called as Thar Rocks. The production will, happen, start the, will start happening now. And we hope that will also have a, a success story around it. So we have now built up large volume platforms of, of 10,000 each between Scorpio, XUV 7 Bolero, uh, Thar, and XUV 3XO. The auto industry is actually doing a slew of program launches in the coming year and the years ahead. Similar is the story with Mahindra. We've done a lot of launches in the last year, this year, and we'll continue to do the launches next year also. We've announced a, lot, a big electric portfolio for ourselves. We'll have three programs rolled out in the next year in terms of launches. And with the born electric vehicles come with its own set of requirements in terms of light weighting because there's a heavy penalty in terms of the battery weight that you're carrying, along with the requirement that it has to meet all the safety requirements. And if we are looking at exporting the vehicles outside India, it has to comply with all the GM cap requirements. And hence, the need to employ the latest technologies in terms of uh, safety, which requires new technologies like hot stamping, ultra high strength steel requirements, so that we keep it to the levels of light weighting and safety requirements. There's also a bigger need to have shorter development cycles so that we roll out the programs much faster. Earlier, we, what we used to do in four years, we have to now do it in 36 months. And hence, the need from that need and expectation from the tool makers in India to deliver faster. We would also lo uh, look at localizing as much as possible to save our capex and also to reduce the lead time and hence the need for localization. As we are looking at doing a going for a platform approach in most of our models, it requires high productivity coming out from all the processes. And hence, the tools also have to be uh, tuned or catered to that kind of a process. So the expectations from the tooling industry is in terms of speed and agility. Lead time reduction from eight to nine months to probably four to six months and deliver a first time right product. It has to improve its capability on newer technologies like hot stamping where most of the tools of hot stamping are imported today. And uh, M&M, which is more on the SUV side, we do a lot of hot stamping in our uh, vehicles to reduce the weight. We also use a lot of ultra high strength steel material, again, for which we do need to import material, uh, import steel, uh, tool steel from tools from outside. On the skin panel side, again, the kind of quality requirements that we have, uh, we are dependent on lots of imports from outside, which we would like to have a capability developed in India not just the capability, but also capacity. While we do have some tool rooms we have, which have the right capability to do skin panels, but we need larger capacity so that more and more panels could be done in India. We would also like in the injection molding area, while injection molding has made rapid advances uh, with some of the good tool rooms in India, but uh, we would like more and more tool rooms to come up to deliver those kinds of parts. Earlier, we were importing all, all our tooling requirements for bumpers, instrument panels, etc. We just started localizing them in, in India. It has saved a lot of money for us and has also saved a lot of uh, uh, timeline for us. We would like more tool rooms to develop that capability. Precision parts like air winds, lighting, uh, we continue to import. We would like that capability to be developed in India so that we can do those parts also in India. I talked about productivity. We need to have high pro higher productivity processes. When we go to larger platforms, delivering 200,000, 300,000 volume in a year, then those kinds of parts need to be produced in 2,000, 3,000 up per day. For this, we need to go to transfer kind of technologies, and hence transfer tools are required, and that capability also needs to be developed. We've seen master checkers still coming from outside that capability needs to be developed. Similarly, soft tools. While soft tools for protoparts can be developed in India, but we need a faster turnaround time. So suppose I have to make a soft tool body. If we get the tools from outside, let's say Korea, Taiwan, we are able to do in a month's time. Whereas in India, it takes three months. So that we need that capability of speed and agility that it can be done in a month's time. So that's the ask of the industry. Now. Th 
Coming to the most important point, which is the people. The quality and technical requirement requires the best of the resources. And hence, the requirement of skill development. So while you get the technology, you need to upgrade the people also, so that they deliver it to the requirement. And there is a big engineering talent which is available in India. You just need to harness them, and you need to develop them. While you do it, it's also important that you de de celebrate diversity in India. If I look at it over here, you can actually see that we have a very low female ratio. And that needs to go up so that we have a diversity in our work environment. We need to have an innovative culture and nurture it. And we need to have a culture which celebrates failures because that's where the innovation happens. And we need the innovation in India because that's the bedrock for manufacturing boost. It's important to also give psychological safety to, so to the people in India, in, the, in our workforce, so that they deliver to the West, they come out with their new requirements, their set of innovations. And in the end, with all this, we create a winning team. So that's how I would put together that there's a lot of business opportunity which is awaited, which is awaiting. India is growing at a rapid growth, which is giving a lot of opportunity to the manufacturing industry in India. It's a question of latching on to that opportunity and growing business for all of us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Ritesh Agrawal, for that insightful presentation. Huge round of applause for our chief guest. <laughs> Moving forward, may I request our guest of honor to address us, Mr. Bagish Dixit, Managing Director and Partner, Alpa India. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Even though the percentage of ladies is significantly low, uh, taking a cue from our chief guest. Uh, dignitaries on and off the dais. May I thank Tagma for the privilege and opportunity to address you. This organization with over 700 members spread over various cities represents the Astra and Shastra of the bedrock of manufacturing of India. So in the Mahayudha of where the manufacturing will take place, you need Astra and Shastra. And as much as 5,000 years back, the Asta and Shastra was a rock or a danda or a loha as it evolved. In today's manufacturing landscape, it starts from tools and ties and gauges and all the stuff that for an average 25-year-old boy or girl, when driving a nice car, whether it's a Mahindra 700 or whether it's a Maruti or whether it's a Mercedes, I don't think that person thinks for once what goes in the Astra and Shastra in the manufacturing of a car. And this is a problem because if we want to go beyond being known as the bastion of IT, and I come from Hyderabad, and it's a city known for IT, and IT has transformed India's position as a well-respected country in the world, a thinking country. We are no longer a back office who's processing invoices. Hyderabad hosts the second and only R&D center of Microsoft, and the examples are manifold. If we want to be in manufacturing, which is also the solution for the 140 crore Indians' aspiration, as our Prime Minister often mentions, then we need the astras and the shastras. And we also need a mindset change. The issue of a woman not being here in large numbers, or for that matter, young people not being interested in manufacturing or let alone tool making, is because of us, the parents. When the child has a hope, he looks towards the parents. They say by the age of seven, the child may jo bhi sanskar dene, it's already over. And the sanskar we give is, we expect this child to get 100 in school, whether he understands the subject or not. He must be top in maths, top in science, top in physics, top in geography, and get a nice job and sit in front of the computer in air condition and get married and have children and hopefully have the same morose, morose and useless life for the next generation. This is our hope. So how will the children learn? I come from a company called Alpla, 
I partnered them for 20 years, and I've been a first-generation entrepreneur for 40 years. I dumped a nice, profitable career in US at the age of 22 and decided to come back because I wanted to create 500 jobs. Minor detail, no money and no honey. Kuch nahi tha haath mein. Par ek arman tha, desh ko aage badhane ka, aur ek injection molding machine, do aadmiyo ke saath lagai, ek mold banwaya, 20,000 rupe ka, and maha se journey chalu hi. Fail ho jayenge, to wapis US jayenge, PhD karenge, and we'll teach people how to do business. That was my backup. Thankfully, I didn't have to come to this. Today, we employ more than 2,000 people. In India, we do 1,500 crores turnover. We have a global turnover of about 5 billion. And I still remember the original mold maker, Panchalda from Bombay, and another gentleman from Calcutta who enabled that journey. So first of all, if we are not interested to teach our children to roll up their sleeves. So Alpla was founded by a gentleman who was Astra and Shastra. He was a technician who was making parts on a lathe in 50s. And he thought, why don't I make a mold? Why don't I make a machine? And that generation led to a second generation which built on it. And today also it's a family company. And why is it that Germany with 80 million people is an export surplus economy and can afford to send equipment, expensive equipment, expensive cars, white goods across the world with the most expensive land, most expensive energy, most expensive salary is because of capability, which I think Agarwal ji just referred to. Jaha capability nahi hai, waha kuch nahi hai. Haat jod ke khade rahiye ga, saab hum se maal kharid liijiye. Vaisa nahi hona chahiye, ulta hona chahiye. Log haat jod ke khade ho ki mujhe maal diijiye. You are the best and you are the most cost effective. And Kamal hai, joh aap logo ko bara mahine mein kar rahe hai, aap teen mahine mein kar rahe hai. Haat jod ke khade hai ke saab mujhe pehle diijiye. Ye badlao aa sakta hai. Aaj ki tarik mein injection molding and packaging. There are companies in my city, I, maybe some representatives are here, Vasanta, Amrita, Bombay Dye Plast. Vasanta is exporting 70% of their tools, doing 300-400 crores. They are not begging for orders because they deliver in 4-5 months instead of 12 months. They do pilots in 2 weeks, 3 weeks. I have spent 60-70 crores during COVID to set up our third tool shop in the world in India, not in Germany, not in Austria. World-class tool room, not one machine is a compromise. The manufacturing environment has a one degree plus minus differential to avoid any deflection on the steel. I don't understand. I'm an accountant, but I understand enough to invest in it. And what I would like to say in the last four minutes is the comment that Agarwal ji made is, yes, sab hota rahega, but if we don't have the right people, every tool room that I have met in India or why only tool room, any manufacturing, Sahab, aadmi nahi milte. Aadmi bhagwan thodi bhejega. Bhagwan ne to 140 crore aadmi bhej rakhe hain. Aapke paas mein vakt nahi hai to think how do we create them into resources. So, going back to the German example, why, why America's manufacturing is down the dumps? They know how to make missiles, they know how to make ICBMs, they know how to do some crazy stuff and I have great... Uh, Respect for that. But why can't they make a shampoo? Why can't they make a car in the same level as they were 50 years back? Why can't they make a toothbrush that has to come from China? Because enablement nahi hai. Not one American wants to do anything which requires him or her to go and sit in a factory. We have 16 factories and we suffer these consequences every day. So why is it that in the same dunya, Germany, Austria, Switzerland can make products and sell all over the world and America cannot. With the lowest cost land, we get land at free of cost. Energy, six cents, much lower than 10 cents in Germany. Yeah, why? Because in Europe, they enable their people. So I would like to give an example of the dual education model, which is the enablement model in Germany, in, in Austria and Switzerland. मैं CII का education chair था तीन साल मैं परेशान हो गया आपके भी मित्र महेंद्रा के उसमें काफी भागीदार हैं finally I invested 10 crores to train 14 children every year with a recurring cost of two crore a year I started this five years back partnered with CII Telangana partnered with government of Telangana just to enable the process 
पैसा हमने लगाया और कोई उससे मोह नहीं था कि लगाना है रिजल्ट माय फिफ्थ जनरेशन सो दे डू टू इयर्स इन अ पॉलीटेक्निक देन वी टेक देम नॉट द टॉप टेन वी टेक पीपल हु हैव एन इंटरेस्ट इन मैन्युफैक्चरिंग गरीब घर के बच्चे जिनमें चाह है कि हम दुनिया बदल देंगे ऐसे बच्चों को खोजते हैं आपको विश्वास नहीं होगा पहले दो जनरेशन वो दो साल पढ़ के आते हैं फिर हमारे पास एक साल नहीं रहते हैं दो साल रहते हैं वी ट्रीट देम लाइक अवर चिल्ड्रेन कपड़ा खाना रहना पीना दे आर इवन टॉट हाउ टू रीड अ न्यूज पेपर हाउ टू मेक देर प्राइवेट बैनल शीट हाउ टू स्टैंड एट एन आर्म्स लेंथ एंड ब्रश देर टीथ एंड नॉट गो लाइक दिस विच आर द सोशल इशूज दैट वी फेस दो साल में जेम होके निकलते हैं हम उनसे हाथ जोड़ते हैं साहब पैंतीस हजार रुपए की स्टार्टिंग सैलरी कृपया ले लीजिए हैं कहीं जाइएगा मत एंड फर्स्ट टू बैचेस नाउ आई हैव इन माय टूल रूम फिफ्टी पीपल सेवनटीन आर फ्रॉम माय टूल रूम माय ओन एजुकेशन सेंटर एंड दे आर रनिंग फाइव एक्सेस मशीन जी की इसकी उसकी टॉप ऑफ द लाइन दस दस करोड़ आठ आठ करोड़ की मशीन है छोटा सा बच्चा इतना सा वो स्टूल लगा के खड़ा होता है क्योंकि पहुंच नहीं पा रहा है पर वो काम ऐसे करता है उसके चेहरे पे ना भारतीयता की लॉ चमक रही है ये बदलाव है और हमने दो साल में 50 परसेंट मोल्ड जो है ना जर्मनी में भेजे यूएस में भेजे माय टूल रूम हैज अ टर्न राउंड ऑफ अ पायलट इन थ्री वीक्स आई कैन डू अ डिजाइन इन अ वीक आई हैव फाइल्ड 25 फाइव पेटेंट इन द लास्ट ट्वेल्व मंथ इट इज ऑल हैपनिंग इन इंडिया so what is required maybe individually we can't do collectively tagma can guide please come to us we will give you free of cost redu education model it has the support of a 60 70 year old company it has the support of the industry association of austria if you want when i talk to the governments in telangana or andhra pradesh or not how can we help to rejuvenate 10000 people koi bada skill bataiye bada skill nahi hai हर चीज की शुरुआत छोटी होती है 14 से 40, 40 से 100, 100 से 200, और ये हर बच्चा अभी मेरा फिफ्थ जनरेशन आई एम टेकिंग अ फ्यू मिनट्स मोर इफ दैट्स ओके विद यू सर मेरा फिफ्थ जनरेशन में 14 बच्चों की जगह थी फॉर ओनली कमिंग फ्रॉम दीज पॉलीटेक्निक्स डू यू नो हाउ मेनी चिल्ड्रेन अप्लाइड लेट मी हेल्प यू टू एप्लीकेशंस From 70 colleges, there were kids who said, "We want to do. आप मुझे कुछ मत दीजिए, मुझे रख लीजिए." And by the way, we insisted. My wife is also partner in this whole business. Last three, we said, "लड़कियाँ होनी चाहिए." तो हर चौदह में से दो तीन, दो तीन. पहले तो बोले संभव ही नहीं है. कोई देना नहीं चाहता लड़की अपनी. क्योंकि लड़कियों के प्रति हमारी इतनी निष्ठा विहीन सोसाइटी है हम चाहते हैं और सबकी बात नहीं कर रहा हूं आई एम टॉकिंग वोट लार्जर परसेंटेज लड़की बड़ी हो पढ़ाई लिखे में एकदम वो भी हंड्रेड 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 होनी चाहिए बट दो साल टाइम पास के लिए यू कैन वर्क समवेयर आफ्टर दैट गेट मैरिड हैव सम चिल्ड्रेन डू वॉट एवर टाइम पास वॉट इज दिस दैट इज फिफ्टी परसेंट ऑफ आर सोसाइटी सो अवर टूल रूम ट्रेनिंग सेंटर ट्वेंटी फाइव थर्टी परसेंट आर गर्ल्स एंड बाय द वे इन सिलवासा वी वर द फर्स्ट कंपनी टू इंसिस्ट गवर्नमेंट अप्रूवल फॉर हंड्रेड परसेंट अलाउंस टू वीमेन टू वर्क थ्री शिफ्ट एंड द फर्स्ट फिफ्टी इंजीनियर्स वी हायर ट्वेंटी सेवन व गर्ल्स सो इन अ समरी योर इंडस्ट्री इज करेंटली टू टू एंड हाफ बिलियन इट इज सपोर्टिंग अ मैन्युफैक्चरिंग बेस ऑफ नाइंटी बिलियन ऑफ मशीन टूल विच इज सपोर्टिंग अ थ्री ट्रिलियन इकोनॉमी रफली Yeah, can be off by a few hundred million. You are supporting two hundred and fifty thousand rough jobs, plus minus fifty thousand. If India has to become five trillion, ये आकाश से नहीं पड़ेगा. This will not be enabled by a Korean guy supplying to Mahindra. I was, by the way, a partner for Mahindra in nineteen eighties. What a transformation between then and now. I chose packaging. That was another subject. This will require that your industry, my industry. Jumps from that two billion to ten billion, because turnover will come later. Enablement has to have better machine tools. You can. हम लोग की ना सोच ऐसी है कि steel तो Switzerland से वो sorry वो Europe से ही आएगा. Hot runner तो Europe से ही आएंगे. बहुत हो गया तो Korea से आ जाएंगे. पर जो हमारा सौ रुपए की घसने का काम है ना, 
वो हम पचास में कर लेंगे और इस जन्म में अगर कमाई नहीं हुई तो अगले जन्म में हो जाएगी हाउ अबाउट मेकिंग द स्टील्स इन इंडिया हाउ अबाउट मेकिंग दीज मशीन इन इंडिया आई नो देर इज अ लॉट ऑफ वर्क गोइंग ऑन इवन इन हैदराबाद देर आर सी एन सी मशीन बट हाउ अबाउट मेकिंग मशीन दैट डिलीवर दीज काइंड ऑफ रिजल्ट दीज आर थिंग्स फॉर अस बट टिल अवर यंग जनरेशन डजेंट वॉन्ट टू रोल द स्लीव एंड दे विल नॉट रोल ऑफ द स्लीव जस्ट बिकॉज वी टेल दैम उसमें कमाई होनी चाहिए उसमें इज्जत होनी चाहिए पहले इज्जत और फिर कमाई तब बदलाव आएगा माय सन्स बोथ ऑफ देम लेफ्ट जॉब्स विद डिलोइट इन यूएस एंड द अदर गाय फ्रॉम यूरोप टू कैन एट्टी परसेंट पे कट दे सेट इंडिया में मजा बहुत है काम यहीं करेंगे आई वुड एनकरेज ऑल ऑफ यू टू टेल योर सन्स एंड डॉटर्स मरेंगे यहीं और करेंगे यहीं एंड फिर देखिएगा कितना मजा आता है थैंक यू वेरी मच that was an amazing success story and huge motivation for all of us here let's put our hands together once again to celebrate our guest of honor mr bagish dikshit managing director and partner alpha india for encouraging all of us with the way forward and at this point of time i would like to say i'm sure so will also agree that your will is stronger than your skill so taking the conversation forward may i request our guest of honor uh, to address us once again mr sunil koparkar managing director of iac international automotive india private limited a huge round of applause for all the initiatives all the forward visions which are unfolding right here thank you good morning good morning ladies and gentlemen it's an uh, honor and privilege to be here obviously sharing the stage with uh, mr agarwal mr dikshit also the tagma dignitaries when uh, our head of our tooling uh, satya asked me to participate in today's event i had no hesitation for a moment because i wanted to celebrate two things one is i am a tool maker by trade i started my career in tool room of bright brothers if anybody knows that company still so i had an opportunity after working for bright brothers to actually work in germany as well as uh, usa even for their tooling accessories company like hascos and dmes even when i moved to canada 40 years ago my first job was with unique mold makers so the tooling is really my my core my heart the second thing is actually i wanted to celebrate was i think we are working on some very interesting new programs and taking the mission of make in india i think this year we are making about 480 molds just the injection molds almost 99% in india and this would not have happened without the support of many of you guys involved in this so uh, i appreciate taking that task on and uh, pretty much delivering on our your commitment so i'll briefly talk about your role in the uh, industry what can we do together whether it's uh, tier 1 like us in automotive oem like mahindra or other uh, societies and the government and again expectations from tooling industry so i think tooling industry is kind of a uh, something like uh, which always works on a backstage you never get recognized for all the good things you do but it is our job to actually make everybody realize that everything you touch has to be made with some kind of tooling even you know when you start your day we talked about toothbrush cannot be made right the cars you drive the tvs you watch everything is connected to the tool so 
I think I'm actually really appreciative that TAGMA is taking and making these events to give the visibility to the tooling industry. So as uh, I think a lot of these thoughts may resonate exactly sentiment and uh, points uh, raised by Mr. Agalwar because we both are in automotive industry and we see exactly the same things. 30% tools are still imported and uh, obviously still gives us enough opportunity to grow the tool making in India, uh, not only uh, stop the imports coming from China, Korea, other areas, but also create our own export market. I think this is probably the right time to look at the industry slowdown. How can we actually deliver the tools on time? One of the key things why we continue to import the tools is primarily driven by two things, the timing and the quality. So those two areas we need to work continuously together and that will actually help us to not only stop the imports and start exporting our tools. So this, the second thing is we look at my uh, talk about how we can help tooling industry. I think just like the automotive OEM, the tier ones like us in automotive are also very committed to grow their make in India uh, tooling business. I think uh, companies uh, are ACMA, TAC, CII, SIAM, and OEM, and TAGMA should work together with government to create the similar ecosystem which used to exist in China and Korea, which made them successful today. I think we need to create that similar thing by creating uh, auto clusters and also creating uh, duty, import duty restrictions, incentives, et cetera. I think when we lived in Canada, we know that the, one of the Canadian mold making industry got successful because we made an auto cluster in US just across the border from US. And taking the advantage of a lower Canadian dollar, we were able to pretty much 100% export to US and that made the Canadian mold making industry very successful. And so something similar needs to be done where we can have the tool makers even in export zones. The machine tool manufacturers obviously need to support by creating uh, very high precision machines the tool makers need today to improve our deliveries and quality of the parts. I think we already touched the basis of how can we get the steel made here to our specification. And uh, I think we need to basically work together to ramp up our machine making capabilities, steel making capabilities, and the right incentives working with different association to uh, boost the business in the industry. Now, some of these expectations, I think, again, I, I did not talk my uh, points with Mr. Agarwal, but they resonate because we are in the same industry. So I think one thing I want to talk about is how we can improve further in tooling. I look at investment in technology is very key. I think tooling industry needs to adopt some of the industry 4.0 principles, invest in mold flows, which are today outsourced quite significantly, invest in automation where is necessary. I was actually last week in uh, China visiting a tool room and just to found out that all his EDM machines were working 24 seven without any being, anybody being there. 
I'm sure some of those capability exist with some of the tool shops here, but they have used quite a bit automation to continue improve their delivery. The second thing we talk about is managing quality. First time right is still a big challenge when it comes to delivering quality. And the delivery time, we continue to import the tools as we talked about 30%, primarily because of two reasons, the first time right and the timing. And as we talked about the initial steps, we, if we can do them, actually will be at par or even better than many of the tool shops all over the world. I think we talk about manpower. I talk manpower in two, two ways. One is upskilling, obviously give them the training, et cetera, need. And then I would also say de-skilling. By the right automation, you may not have to really uh, depend on very highly skilled people. Also, I think there are successful models. I think uh, Mr. Dixit already alluded I think most of the German companies, Austrian companies, have a very successful structured apprenticeship program. And it's not only in the tool shop, but it's also with uh, tier ones, where we actually can do our tool maintenance and other areas. So I would say upskilling and de-skilling. Diversity is a key. I think we are missing an opportunity using 50% of potential workforce which we haven't touched. We have seen, even in our engineering department, I think we have actually increased quite a bit uh, ratio of our female employees. And there is no limit. So as many as you can hire and train will actually help us. So again, just to conclude, three things. We will talk about investing in technology train new and old uh, you people. Also, you need to retain your staff. I think the key is the, uh, as soon as there are opportunities abroad, I think we are losing a lot of talents uh, which, are, which are grown in the CPETs and NTTFs in India or get lost to export market. So we need to really stop that. And one of the last point I want to talk about is unlearn the learnings. I think whatever we have done today is not going to make it successful. So we need to understand the expectations are changing around the world. And we need to really refocus and manage our systems uh, that way. So that are, again, thank you, Tagma, for inviting me. Uh, continue to make this effort to put tool makers and tooling in front and center and bring the visibility. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing the global perspective and knowledge is power like we know. Sharing the same is, of course, superpower. Thank you. Huge round of applause once again for our guest of honor, Mr. Sunil Suparkar. And moving, uh, pardon me, Mr. Sunil Koparkar, Managing Director of IAC International Automotive India Private Limited. Moving forward, may I request our keynote speaker to please address the audience. Please put your hands together as I welcome Mr. Salil Kumar, Vice President, SMT Group of Companies, to join us here. Good morning. Morning, friends and dignitaries. We heard Mr. Dikshit, Mr. Agarwal, and Mr. Sunil uh, to emphasize on quality, delivery, manpower. So uh, uh, if we talk about uh, quality and uh, technology, what has to go for a uh, uh, tool manufacturing. So looking into the market, what is uh, present in India uh, in two, uh, 2024, and the technology available, Many things has to enter uh, in Indian market for tool manufacturing. Indian diamond mold market size is estimated to grow by 20,000 crore at a CAGR of 10% in 24-29, in between 24 and 2029. It is expected to reach around 1.2 lakh crore by 29 and 30. 
So uh, in next five years, we are expecting multifold growth in machine tool, sorry, uh, so die mold manufacturing. I'm from a machine tool background, so uh, that also comes as a, a technology for uh, die and mold manufacturing, tooling manufacturing. At present, estimated market size of Indian tool industry stands at approximately 23,000 crore. And out of this, this is not sufficient, so approximately 34% of tooling is imported from different countries, from China, Taiwan, Korea, Germany. These are major uh, importers to India, sorry, exporters to India, import, India imports from them. In dye and mold manufacturing, the latest technology trend focus on enhancing some new technology inside manufacturing of dye and mold. One is additive manufacturing. That is taking up fast 3D manufacturing because if we want to cut the delivery time, uh, machining time has to come down and we have to be uh, to adopt uh, 3D printing technology for tool manufacturing. The use of 3D printing for creating molds and dyes is becoming increasingly common and this complex allows for rapid prototyping as well as production of the complex geometries. Second one is advanced material. There are a lot of material entering into tool and, tool and dye manufacturing, just like uh, composites, ceramics. We have to adopt these material for tools in place of which has got a better life, which has got a uh, number of uh, more shots for uh, uh, pressing. So uh, this gives a, a longer tool life and a longer manufacturing cycles. Digital twin and simulation. This, this is a technology called virtual replica of the die and mold where we can check the die and mold before putting it on the shop floor. That gives a, a, a confidence of going for the manufacturing of the tool. So before we manufacture the tool, we can check it on a uh, virtually uh, that it is going to work 100% correct. Automation and robotics, that is uh, what uh, uh, Mr. Sunil was telling that may, in many countries uh, the whole shop floor is being run by one or two people. So the same way if we have uh, automation and robotics in tool manufacturing and reduce the manpower, it is going to solve uh, uh, manpower problem also and uh, uh, robots work 24 hours. They do not need a, a lunch time and break time. So the manufacturing cycle will also become quick. Precision machining, advanced CNC machines. We are in India, uh, uh, many companies are there who are manufacturing CNC machines. Uh, we are adopting technology very fast. Uh, we ourselves are a CNC manufacturer. And uh, we have added a lot of uh, new uh, technology for uh, uh, high quality, die and mold manufacturing machines. So that uh, cycle has to keep it on. Internet of Things, IoT, technology being used to monitor the mold because mold manufacturing, if we are able to monitor the mold perfectly, the mold life will be much improved. We will be able to get the quality of the output from the mold much better. So we can use a lot of uh, uh, sensors, uh, controlling the flow of the material inside the mold when it is being used. So that technology has to be adopted when we are supplying the mold for OEMs. Hybrid manufacturing, already we have seen that 3D printing is a technology which we should adopt for tool manufacturing. Hybrid is, as well as 3D printing, we can have a subtractive material technology also. So both the cycles can be used, we can have a printing, after that we can have a machining to get a proper, faster, and a well-delivered tool. Substantial manufacturing, there is an increasing focus on substantial dye mold manufacturing. This includes the use of eco-friendly materials. As whole world is talking about, uh, we have to go as per the nature, we have, we have to save our nature. So a lot of eco-friendly material has to be used for tool and uh, dye manufacturing. Because as uh, the manufacturing scale is going up, we have to save our environment also. Smart molds, we have to make molds uh, 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 more 
calculative where we can have uh, temperature, pressure, material flow leading to the better quality control from the mold which is getting out of the mold and surface treatment. So there are new surface treatment uh, which has been adopted for dye and mold manufacturing. So that has to be taken into view when we go for a new setup of dye and mold manufacturing. These trends are driving innovation and efficiency for dye and tool. So uh, just I wanted to give a, a look out that along with the uh, manpower, there is a technology involved. And if we involve the technology well in dye and mold, we can have a better delivery time. Because all the imports maximum are happening due to a shorter delivery time they are able to give with respect to our own manufacturing. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. We were keeping an eye on the timer, but you were super quick. Huge round of applause for sir for keeping it short and sweet, but conveying the message. Thank you so much, Mr. Salil Kumar, Vice President, s &T Group of Companies. And of course, finally, we have come to the moment of a vote of thanks to be given by none other than the Vice President of Tagma, Mr. D. Sharmuga Sundaram. I'll just repeat that name once again, this name. I think I have not got it correct till now. And I am super focused on this. I have to get it right. So over to you, Mr. D. Sharmugandhan. 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 Thank you so much. Good morning to everyone. As the Vice President of Association, it's my privilege to welcome you all for this ITS 2024. I want to begin my extending my deepest gratitude to the esteemed leaders on the dais, especially I would like to thank and welcome our esteemed Chief Guest Ritesh Agarwal, Vagis Dikshish, and Sunil Koparkar, and Salil Kumar, as well as the President and all the EC members. In the morning, when I was interacting with people, they said, this is the biggest event. Are you sure this is the biggest event? So the Mumbai has done it. This eighth edition has got 500 plus delegates here. When we began the first edition, many people appreciated the initiative. Now in the eighth edition, many people are saying that yes, even the chief guest said yes, this kind of event to be done for the tool makers. And I am very thankful for the delegates, sponsors, and the chief guest who has took, took time, and the guest of honors who has took time in their busy schedule to start in this program. Also, many delegates from abroad, as well as all over India has arrived. I would like to welcome you all. The theme for this year's summit, Scaling Up the Indian Tooling Industry, highlights the vast potential and excitement opportunities ahead of us. Many speakers in the morning, they have given the numbers. I don't want to repeat the numbers again, as I have got all the, uh, although I have numbers like 23,600 crores, 7,000 crores of automotive tooling sector, electronics and uh, plastic industry at the biggest of 4,500 crores. Also, defense is playing a big, big role and we have plenty of opportunity. The topic scaling up is the most important topic. As our chief guest said, most points is localization, speed and agility, and first time right product, and capability and capacity. So sure, sir, we at Tagma will ensure that this all happening in the coming years. And we at Tagma are facilitating with the government to provide skill development and also assistance for technology acquisition scheme. And also, we are bringing out global talent pool, that is senior expert service, which is available at 13,000 people across the world at different walks of industry. We can bring them. We are working with Government of India. Very soon, we will give an announcement from Tagma. That means you can have an experts for the skill development, they will travel to India, stay with you. All the cost will be borne by Government of India as well as TAGMA jointly organizing this program. Also, TAGMA's initiatives is towards, we are planning for a delegation to the foreign countries like uh, Japan, Taiwan, and Korea. This will be announced shortly next month. Uh, maybe Jim Toff and Tim Toss will be covered during their visit. 
Thank you once again for being here and for your continued commitment to our industry. I hope you make the most of these two days and leave with new ideas, connection, and inspiration to save the future of tooling. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Shanmugam Sundaram. Huge round of applause for the Vice President of Tagma India. And at this point of time, may I request you all to please stand up in the loving memory of Dr. Raghuraj. Let me tell you a little about him. He was the Executive Vice Chairman of NTTF and Founder President of Tagma India. We will be observing a minute of silence post let me tell me let me tell you the process of how we have known him over the years he was a visionary leader passionate educator and a great mentor to many in the tooling and the tooling manufacturing industry he has been instrumental in the growth and development of tagma india and the tooling fraternity at large let's observe a moment of silence thank you once again now we will proceed with the celebration and with the felicitation of our eminent guests. So may I request President and Vice President to please join us here to do the honors, Mr. Shirigar and Mr. Sham Mugasundaram to please be here to do the honors. Huge round of applause from everybody present here. Calls for a perfect photo op as well. Huge round of applause. First, we'll request our chief guest, Mr. Ritesh Agarwal, to be felicitated. Huge round of applause. The hashtag for the day is hashtag ITS2024. Guest of Honor, Mr. Vagish Dikshit. It calls for more energy. I think he did raise the energy of the house. May I request Mr. Sunil Koparkar, also our guest of honor, to please be felicitated. Next, may I request Mr. Salil Kumar, our keynote speaker, to be felicitated. Calls for a perfect photo op. I think we can also do a group photo op for great memories to continue forward. Huge round of applause for all the industry stalwarts who have inspired us to take the Thinking Thursday forward. My name is Shayanti Banerjee and it's an absolute honor to be a part of your show. I am already learning so much and I'm looking forward to these two days of the summit.